Hello and welcome to the webinar on making math digital. My name is Linda Daly and I am an AT specialist with the Special Education Technology Center. Uh, my background is in math, therefore I get to do the math webinars for us. And um, I also have Nora Trentacos, did I say that correctly? Um, joining us from Textel and Hi. Hi, Did everybody. Thanks for having me. And I'll, I'll answer to just about anything. It's Trent Acosta. Trent Acosta. Oh, okay, thank you. Super glad to be here. So, well, thank you. We really appreciate you joining us. And um, today's webinar is really an overview of math apps and other resources on the web. So um, the objective is that you would be able to see at least, and you're going to see more than two apps and websites that allow students to demonstrate math and science knowledge digitally that will actually allow you or your students to represent math and science digitally. And that you'll be able to share digitally for your students to explore concepts independently. And also that these resources will also give them some opportunities for guided instruction and ways to apply math to real world applications. And you'll also be able to identify these collaborative tools that you'll be able to use with your students and um, they'll be able to use with each other. And so they will be able to learn and apply their STEM knowledge in these kind of digital ways. I actually have one section on low tech and no tech too, just because I think it's important that we don't forget that. So. Um, one of the reasons, things I want to just first talk about is why do we even explore these? What is the purpose of the you know, apps and websites and resources for math? And really, it comes back to universal design for learning and learner variability. Everyone has their strengths, their preferences, their non-preferences. They have their struggles. And so when we look at things with multiple ways of engagement and representation and expression, we have a better chance of reaching all our learners. And so really we're thinking about this from the perspective of universal design for learning. And I think a lot of us now have heard that term and we probably know it's about the why of learning, the what of learning and the how of learning. But one of the things I wanted to show you is Katie Novak, who's one of the gurus in UDL has actually developed a UDL guidelines for math with math examples. So that is one of the links that we can put into the chat right now. And you can go to that yourself. I didn't put a link directly into this UDL guidelines because when you go to the link I gave you, she does ask you to sign up and then she emails it to you. So I felt that really from a copyright standpoint, I needed to follow that format and not just send you her UDL guidelines, but I am showing it to you. So what I like is she takes the UDL guidelines and she does the, you know, engagement is part of recruiting interest. It's sustaining effort and persistence, self-regulation. And then she gives you examples of how to do that for math. So encourage students to self-differentiate their learning by providing options and choices for learning and sharing what they know about a mathematics concept. As an example, allow a student to draw a physical model instead of an equation to represent an application problem. And so she gives you those ideas for each of those areas for engagement. And then also she does it for representation. So perception, design multimodal learning, you know, example, visual and auditory. For language and symbols, pre-teach your vocabulary and symbols, especially in ways that promote connection to the learner's experience and prior model. So she gives you some real concrete examples of how to do this. Um, comprehension, foster visualization to increase comprehension. So she gives you that. So that is where she's using the representation and then the action and expression you know, for physical action, use online tools such as Desmos or Equatio or GeoGebra um, for expression and communication, design performance-based learning tasks and assessments, allow students to create multimedia presentations of solutions such as digital storytelling blogs and podcasts. I think in some ways, 
math and science are some of the easiest for action and expression to do these different multimodal ways. So um, that's, I think in a way we, that is a little easier in math and science. Um, executive functions under that, ask students to estimate before solving problems. So I just thought this was worth showing you because she's created one specifically for math. So, um, and so that is where I just wanted to talk about kind of a background of UDL. As we're going through this, I would like you to think about your students. So just think about your students and who might benefit from the different resources we're looking at. Um, how can I reach these learners and remove as many barriers as possible? Do some of your students struggle with reading? Do some struggle with recall? Do some struggle to just physically write math or science? Do some need to see or draw a visual? And would some do better if they could speak instead of write? Which is often a problem with math, but we actually even have some solutions for that. We have um, Equatio allows for speech to text for math. So that's something that we actually have now that we haven't had in the past. We've had it for a few years now, but I mean, originally we did not have that. Um, one of the things I want to talk about, though, before we get into actual tools and resources is how do you evaluate math tools? And this is something that I have come up with and from other people, too. But if anybody has a way that they like to evaluate, I would love it if people would want to share, because um, that's all of the resources I've given you have been shared from people used to be just within the Washington state, but now we've gotten people from all over the country who've added to our resources. So um, if you have some great evaluation tools, please feel free to put them in the chat. You can email them to me and I can add them to resources. But um, just for today, I was just thinking, what are some things we need to think about? First of all, does it support the goal of the lesson? It's cool, it's flashy, but does it actually support the goal of the lesson? And how does it work with the way we learn or we teach math? And one of the ones that I hear so often is, can we do math problems vertically versus horizontally? Because with digital math, so often we're still doing it horizontally. And yet when we teach math, we really do a lot of it vertically. So can the tool do it? Um, know the purpose for the tool. You know, what does it really, what is the purpose for this tool? And is that purpose going to help what you're trying to do? Does it allow you to share a PDF and have students complete it digitally? Is that the purpose you want? Is it just a replacement for paper and pen? Your students can do the math, they understand it, but they can't write. So we need to find a replacement. Um, does it allow students to explore the concept and get help when solving a problem? So is this really about exploration and getting more in depth on a concept? And then always be thinking about accessibility features. Can your students see it? Do they need help? Do they need the text to speech? Do they need the accessibility features because they need to only use a mouse or they need to use a specific kind of mouse? So what are the accessibility features? Um, I do have some um, examples of um, different ways to look at evaluating math apps. And when you get the slide deck, you will have all these links available to you. But for right now, I have just pulled them up so you can see them. And so I will just get those pulled up right now. So the first one, I just like this. It's just a visual for how you can evaluate apps. First of all, engagement. Does it actually engage the student? Is it developmentally appropriate for the student? And what is its instructional design? Does the app support your teaching goals, like we talked about? And then is it motivating for the student? And is it accessible? So just a visual for kind of those same things I just talked about. And again, if you like that, there's a link in the slide deck to it. And then here is um, a copy of an app evaluation form that's a little more formal, but this can be really good if you are trying to justify why you would want to spend money on an app. And this was actually created um, by one of my sexy colleagues, Rose Roscoe, and she, she created it, adapted it from something she had found. But you just list the name of the app, the extension of the feature, what's the subject or the skill category, 
And then you can rate the functions. So ease of use, relevance to lesson content, accessibility features, frequency of projected use, potential for upgrade with improvements, usefulness for academic intervention, usefulness as an evaluation tool or a progress monitoring tool, representation, expression, motivational tool, and is it a reasonable price? And then comments. So this I think can be really helpful, especially as you're looking to purchase the maps and what, you know, this is a good way to look at it and say, look, I've got the data to show you that it's, you know, we've reviewed three of them. Here's why we've chosen the one we've chosen. So, um, um, and then whoops, that's the resource document you've already seen. So uh, that is, I just wanted to show you those. And um, so then I also just wanted to mention that common sense media for education, they usually have reviews on most of the apps out there and they have a really nice way of reviewing it. Um, it they do it from a parent standpoint and from an educator standpoint. So I just wanted to mention that too and there's a link there to their website. So um, just some actual resources for you just for evaluation and thinking about how you would evaluate these tools. Um, Couple other things I just want to talk about now is just the commonality of digital math tools. There's just some kind of, um, what do I want to say? It, it's just the nature of digital tools that we have to have some structure to how we enter them. And at the very lowest level, there is a structure of input. And I honestly, I'm just gonna tell you right now, I don't know how you say this word. I've heard it said both ways, latex and latex. And I don't know which is appropriate or I mean, which is accurate, but I've heard it from multiple people, multiple ways. So, but that, but the important part of it is that is the underlying structure of how a computer is going to understand math. So when you are at a high level of writing a math textbook or entering math, it's going to be faster to you to just learn this language. And that's way, the way you can just enter your math. But it's complicated. And our students do not need to learn that language. <laughs> that is not something they need to learn. They're trying to learn the math. They don't need to learn this underlying language. So what our tools do now is take that underlying structure and allow students to put the input in in a simpler way and then the program will do the conversion for them so the computer can understand it. Um, but one of the ways they do that is often with a template so that we have templates for how to use fractions or square roots or exponents. The thing about this is, is our students get these templates because they're using them now from a very early age. I, you know, I tutor lots of students and it doesn't matter how much math they know, they seem to know how to use the templates. And so that doesn't seem to be a problem for our students anymore. They're pretty used to that. Um, often you do have to enter information horizontally instead of vertically. And if you want to use vertical math, you're going to have to use some form of a grid line. And that is pretty common with most of our math tools. And it's really just a function of how the computer is going to recognize how things line up, how they, that they're math. And so um, I just think it's worth pointing out why from a computer programming standpoint, these things are the way they are. <laughs> so I just like to mention that. And um, so now what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna hit some highlights of some of these tools. And then what I would like you to do is we're gonna give you 20 minutes so that you can go in and just explore these tools on your own. So you're gonna take the one that you're most interested in and you're gonna go into that. And I, what I've done is I have the, um, the resource sheet I've given you that has information that you can find. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna hit each of these tools, just give you a couple of highlights about them and what they do. And then I'm going to let you go in and explore them. So the first one is Desmos. And that one seems to be very common that most people have used it. It does graphing, it analyzes data, it has accessibility features such as braille display. The accessibility features have been really um, expanded in the last couple of years. 
So if you haven't checked those out, I would encourage you to check them out. And then they have all kinds of interactive activities and lessons that have been created by teachers that any teacher can use. And then um, GeoGebra has graphing also. Um, one of the things I did not put on Desmos is they, they do now have a geometry construction tool. So that was in the works for a couple of years, but it's actually available now. Um, GeoGebra, most people think of as a geometry construction tool, but it also has graphing. It also has a great resource bank of lessons, and it has um, uh, an algebra calculator. It has algebra. You can do algebra and see it graph. Scientific calculator helps you analyze data. There's a 3D map that you can explore. They also now have a classroom mode where you can actually um, set up a classroom, see what your students are doing in real time. And so you can explore that too. Um, and then Equatio, this is one of the big things that's so cool is they have handwriting recognition and they have speech to text. One of the things I love about the speech to text in Equatio is that it ignores the non math words. And so it, as you're starting to talk, it won't get all the ums and the, you know, all the extra words, but like, and will show up as a plus sign. And so it, it's really smart. <laughs> and so it almost can set up a word problem for the students if it's a simple word problem it, when they read it in. Um, they do equation prediction, like word prediction um, for both science and math. They have a really cool talking, I call it a talking periodic table of elements. I don't know if that's what you just call it, but it actually will give you the information and, and you know, use text to speech to read it to you and shows you a graphic of an element. It's very cool. Um, and now a new feature, they have orbit note where you can do math right on a PDF. And I have a video demo that you can see right there. Um, so that I'm going to just, because I have these three on the screen, I'm just going to really quickly go out of the um, PowerPoint and just I have each of these pulled up and I just want you to be able to see them very quickly so um, and I'm not going to demo the whole thing I just want you to at least get a visual of what you're looking at so um, the first one was Desmos so as I say often many people have seen Desmos you can do all kinds of graphics with them you can do all kinds of interactive lessons they do have a whole page where you can learn about how to use Desmos. So I have that linked in the document, but you can get started with the activities. You can use the graphing calculator. Um, and so that's Desmos that you can check out. Here is GeoGebra. And so this is just the home page. And there's lots of different apps, the geometry app that most people have seen where you can do geometric construction. And you can also, when you do it on here, the algebraic equivalent will show up over here so you can go back and forth between them. Um, here again is the resources. You can just sort through the different topics in math and then you can, I, I just hundreds if not thousands of resources that people have created already for you. Um, here's one that's the inclinement plane with two masses and a pulley. You run it, it will run the um, simulation. You can change the sizes of them. So this is the kind of activity you can see. Um, you can even get this detailed with it where you can look at the phases of the moon and you can just watch it as it goes around the earth. So I thought that was a pretty cool one too. So lots of fun things you can do with that. Um, and so that is that one. And then Equatio, I have here. I don't have a great version. That's why I have Nora here. Nora, do you want to share your screen and just quickly show what it would look like, or do you want to wait for the breakout room? So I just thought maybe if you could at least show yeah. here. Okay, if you want to share, absolutely. Your screen, I'll stop sharing, and you can, you know. Okay. Let me just get you guys to something with Equatio. So um, I have a um, Google slide right here um, and it works in slides. It works in docs. It works in forms, which makes a lot of teachers very happy. And the part of Equatio that I didn't hear about there, which kind of sounds like it's 
um, so when you hit the graphing button, we've actually integrated Desmos into. So if you know how to use Desmos, you already know how to use a big part of um, Equatio. And then all, all some of that kind of fun stuff that you were just showing with um, GeoGebra. Um, nobody seems to find this on their own, but there is a piece of um, Equatio called Math Space. I'm just going to um, put in a new slide here so you can see how that might work. Um, when you create a Math Space, it's basically a blank digital canvas and it has all of the Equatio tools that you know and love. So down here we've got our equation editor, which is like uh, math prediction. So instead of having to type out a quadratic formula, right? Like I just did QU and picked quadratic and then maybe I know some of these things and I can change them, right? Um, and then you can see down here, it says insert math and edit math. So what we're thinking is that that math is going to be an iterative process. It's not a one shot deal. As a student, you can go back and change it. As a teacher, you can say, hey, go back to step two and let's try this again. Um, so there's that piece. Um, and you could see you were talking about the LaTeX. This is the LaTeX behind it. And I don't know if there's any VI people on this call, but there are some braille machines that ask you for the LaTeX and you could use the word prediction or you could even speak it in, grab the LaTeX and then dump it in another machine if you wanted to. Um, you've got your handwriting recognition, right? So you can do, um, I'm not using a stylus here, I'm using my finger, so it's not gonna be too pretty, but it, uh, it should. Okay, so you can see what I'm going to get over here. Let me get rid of what I've got here. Uh, let's get rid of that. And I'm going to replace that math up there. So let's get rid of this here. Um, we've got speech input. So let me get rid of this guy over here. And we can do speech input, hamburger, hot dog. Hamburger, hot dog, 3x plus ice cream equals 27. So just like you were saying, Linda, if you've got a kid that goes, mm, 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 it's not going to be M cubed, right? <laughs> um, and here's those STEM tools that you were talking about. So that's the periodic table where you can find out about different elements. There's also a scientific calculator, which is the same one that's on the state test. And then this is super cool. This is your, um, let's just look for something. Um, and we can look at this in different formats and, um, you know, move it around and look at that. So that's a kind of a cool piece for science. The prediction also does science words. But the thing that nobody finds about Equatio is when you're here in this math space, you have the ability to use all of these awesome manipulatives. So this is like a whiteboard where you can build anything that you like. And I, I'm sorry, my Zoom thing is kind of covering this up here, but there are um, shapes here that you can pick. So everything that you would need for geometry, um, there's coins, there's tanagrams, there's, so everybody sees this stuff and they, they instantly go to algebra, but there's tons that we can do here for the primary kiddos. And if you're working with low incidence kids that maybe need to do things a lot of different times, Math Space is your buddy because you can come up with unlimited crazy practice opportunities. So we got tens frames and counting rods and all kinds of jazzy jazz there. So the cool thing that you can do with this is you create, um, you know, we could do something like with coins and, you know, ask the kids to make 37 cents. But when you go to share this, um, you can actually share that. I'm putting it right inside my slide, but I could also just send a link directly to that math space. So lots of different ways you can share it with your LMS. And we're doing this in Google, but a lot of the, everything except the math space I can do in, um, in Microsoft as well. And I, I can export to MathML if I need to. Thank you so much. You bet. Uh, and I have a breakout room for this. So, and Nora's awesome. going to join that. And then the I have some videos in there and you can check that out. So, thanks. Um, okay. So then we'll just keep going with the rest of our um, resources. Um, so, one of the breakout rooms is you can just check out that actually within Microsoft Office and Google, you can 
to have some math features. OneNote, whether you're using it in Microsoft or you're using it in Chrome, OneNote has a math feature that will actually walk a student step by step in how to solve a problem. And so you'll see that in the breakout document. And that is actually now available as an app for iPad and Android. And so certain Chromebooks can run Android apps. So this would actually be for a Chromebook if you have that type of a Chromebook. And it's called Math Solver. Um, this next one, okay, I'm just gonna tell you, it's not professionally done. What has happened is over the years, people have asked me, what can I do for a student who really gets it, but cannot write or cannot keep things lined up? And I had that question again last spring, and I have had this thought for so many years, why can't we just use a spreadsheet? So I ended up creating this little video that's on here. And I said, what about if you do this? And the teacher said, that's all I needed. And she was able to use that. And this student who has struggled because he can't write and keep things lined up, has been able to do his math now. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna put it on there. So it's just a little spreadsheet showing you what, how you could just use a plain old, I mean, it's just a little video showing you how you can just use a plain old spreadsheet. Linda, do you wanna share as you're, as you're running through these or were you um, gonna wait till for them to look at the resource doc? I'm gonna let them wait to look at the resource doc on these because I just time-wise, I want them to have time to look at it. And these I think are a little bit more just you can explain it and if they're interested they can see it because is, is that okay yeah i just meant your visual slides right now as you're running through so they have a visual oh, you you're talking see, about oh are you not seeing those no oh i thank you i am so sorry i didn't know you weren't seeing those <laughs> so i thought you were seeing those i thought you meant the actual where the links i was showing thank you Kristen. i will show those yes so, okay, there you go. <laughs> That's what you want to see. Um, okay, yes. So the math note, math, one note math feature, the math solver, and the just using a spreadsheet. And then um, just a second now, I have to get this back up here. Okay. Um, and then there are some apps for replacing just pencil and paper. So there's a Mod Math app and a Panther Math app that will allow you to just right on the iPad and then you can send it, you can import worksheets and then you can send those to your teacher. So the whole, and those are just, um, there's, they're a grid and you'll be able to use those. Um, Cami PDF editor um, also now allows you to do math right on the PDF. So now you have a couple of different options for doing that. And when I pulled up the PDF, you may have seen those options on the side when I pulled up the Katie Novak PDF. And so you can check that out. And then I also just thought some people want to explore virtual manipulatives. So I just have a breakout room where you can look at a whole bunch of different options for virtual manipulatives. And then a low tech and no tech option, just some ideas. If you want that, you could go into breakout room seven. So um, what we're going to do now is just explore. I'm going to give you the 20 minutes. So it's 4.05 according to my watch. So I'm going to give you the 4.25. So and then we'll come back together and wrap up.